Thank you. <clears throat> Evening, everybody. Um, last week, I spoke on spiritual impartation. And um, the main text that I was looking at was uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, which compared the glory of the old covenant with the glory of the new covenant. And if you missed that, you can go to our messages section on our uh, church website and catch up. Um, but tonight I want to go a little bit more into detail because in, in 2 Corinthians 3, it mentioned about Moses and his face shining and the glory of God that came into his life. And I'd like to read um, from that, well, that, 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 that sort of experiences that that Moses had. And I'm going to read the whole of Exodus chapter 33 for us, the whole of Exodus chapter 33. Then the Lord said to Moses, depart and go up from here, you and the people who you've brought out of the land of Egypt to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, saying to your descendants, I will give it and I'll send my angel before you and I will drive out the Canaanite and the Amorite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you're a stiff necked people. And when the people heard this bad news, they mourned and no one put on his ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, say to the children of Israel, you're a stiff necked people. I could come up in your midst in one moment and consume you. Now, therefore, take off your ornaments that I know, may know what to do with you. So the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by Mount Horeb. Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the Tabernacle of Meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the Tabernacle of Meeting, which was outside the camp. So it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his door tent, uh, tent door and watched Moses until he'd gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked to Moses. All the people saw the pillar of the cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped, each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend, and he would return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people. But you've ne not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I might find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we'll be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are on the face of the earth. So Moses said to, Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, please. Show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I'll be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I'll have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no one shall see me and live. And then the, then, and then the Lord said, here is the place by me and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be when my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you see my back, but my face shall not be seen. 
um, very powerful passage that. And um, the background here is that with the wickedness and rebellion of the children of Israel, God had had enough and said, you can have the promised land. I'll send my angel, an angel to help you go into the promised land, but I'm not coming with you. Um, I'll be for you. I'll be for you in the sense that I will sense an angel to help you, but I won't be with you. And Moses was having none of it. He was like, if you're not with us, what's the point? We might go into the promised land and, and enjoy all the promises that you've said, but without you, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, just on a separate point, do you know that God can be for you and not with you? God can be for you and not with you. Um, just like you can be a child of God, but not a friend of God. And so God can be for you. He can look after you, but it doesn't mean he's with you. He, he, he doesn't mean he's necessarily approving of you or you're in intimate relationship with him. Well, to Moses, being with God was the greatest thing ever to have his presence with him and all the other promises and all the other things. Were, were, were meaningless uh, if God wasn't with him. What's the point, Moses said, if you give us all the things you promised, but you withhold yourself. So God can be for a Christian and not necessarily with them at a period of time. But that's not really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the fact that um, Moses said, please show, show me your glory. Please show me your glory. And um, when we talk about um glory what does it mean when Moses said show me your glory what is glory well glory is a number of things but um you can you can basically crystallize it down to three things glory is reputation reputation so someone's glory is their repute who they are what they've done their reputation their 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 glory so you know uh, somebody who won the world cup final they carry you know the glory of that achievement their rep their, they have a reputation of being a world cup winner do you see what i mean and so glory means reputation but glory also in the bible means heavy weightedness that's what the word means heavy weightedness it's a heaviness of of, of a presence when when god is with them there's a heavy presence a heavy weightiness uh, and, and thirdly, it's a brightness and outshining. So often the glory of the Lord will shine. So it's reputation. It's a heavy weightiness and it's a brightness and an outshining. And so when, when we come to this moment where uh, we, we are going to see that Moses is, is going to receive an impartation of God's glory, he says, show me your glory. And um, he's going to show him his glory, but he can't show, give him the full glory because in his mortal body, he couldn't take the fullness of God's glory. It would be too heavy, too weighty, too bright and too much for the physical human body to uh, be able to take. That's why one day we'll have glorified resurrection bodies where we'll be able to stand in the fullness of God's glory and not faint, not die, um, but just in in enjoy. That's all. That's all to come. And so, uh, God says that he's he's going to show Moses his glory. Um, but what what was what did God's glory come with during this? What what was the glory that was revealed to him? Was it just simply um, presence? We know that in two Corinthians three. Uh, when Moses would come out of the presence of of God, his face would reflect the shining glory of God. But well, there's four things here, four things that came with God's glory. And I think these four things are very important for us to look at. I mean, when God said, I'm going to come, what did he say he was going to come with? Well, what is God's glory in essence? Well, God describes um, four things that he's going to come in his glory. His glory is going to have four things. Uh, he says, I'm going to make my goodness pass before you. 
So the first thing is the goodness of God. And then he says, and I'm going to proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And so the first one is the goodness of God. He's going to have an impartation experience of God's goodness. It's going to pass before him. The second thing is the name of the Lord is going to be proclaimed before him. Thirdly, graciousness. I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious. God's sovereign graciousness is going to experience graciousness. And then fourthly, I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. God's sovereign compassion. So when we talk about Moses's experience of, of the glory and his, his the, the experience, the revelation and the impartation of God's glory, when, when God said, you want to see my glory, you're going to experience my goodness. You're going to experience my name. You're going to experience my graciousness and you're going to experience my compassion. And I want to talk about these four aspects, because when God comes in his glory, these other th whatever else he brings, we should expect these four things to come. And so the first thing he said when after uh, Moses said, please show me your glory. God's response was, yes, I will show you my glory. And his response was, I number one, I will make all my goodness pass before you. This wasn't doctrine. This wasn't teaching. This was experience, impartation. He was going to experience God's goodness. It was going to pass before him. And so the goodness of God was going to come. And, you know, uh, I, 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 God is good. And the congregation says all the time. And then the preacher says all the time. And then the congregation says, God is good. Used to do that very often. His goodness and his goodness is a, one, a wonderful thing. Um, we won't go to it, but in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, 2 Chronicles chapter 5, that's the place where they were dedicating the temple. 2 Chronicles chapter 5 verse 13 and it says well i'll read it to you 2 chronicles 5 verse 13 indeed it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the lord and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the lord saying for he is good his mercy endures forever and when they did that that the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. So you see, what were they praising? They were praising his goodness for he is good for his mercy endures forever. And what did God do? Well, there in the house, as it was being dedicated, the cloud of his glory and his goodness came into the temple and the priests just could not even minister god's goodness is so important we've heard some encouragements in prophetic tonight tonight about encouraging ourselves to keep trusting god's good, goodness remember in acts chapter 10 verse 38 acts chapter 10 verse 38 it talks about how god anointed empowered Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him, not just for him, but with him. And Jesus went about doing good. Think about what he did in those three years. You know, in Luke chapter four, uh, he said, the spirit of the Lord has anointed me uh, to preach good news, uh, to, to heal. And so Jesus went around doing good. He cured the sick. He restored the sight of the blind. He made the lame walk. He raised the dead back to life. He fed the hungry. He forgave sins. He drove out oppressing demons and he heralded the coming of the kingdom of God. The favorable year of the Lord, the favorable year of the Lord, the Jubilee anointing had come in Jesus 
and uh, he was good. I like James when it talks about the fact that God is good and um, and that with God there is no shifting. He's always at his best. There's no shifting with him. He he he's not like a sundial that has sh- has shadows. But when the sundial when it's when the new when the sun is at its fullest at noon, then the sundial has no shadow because the uh, the sun is directly above it, and there's no shadow of turning with God. He is at high noon. He is good all the time. He's not less good one day and more good another day. He is always in his fullness of goodness. And uh, maybe the clouds of circumstances might come into our lives and the clouds can um, obscure the sun, can't they? But the sun is not shining any less bright, whether it's cloudy in the sky Uh, or whether it's clear in the sky, the sun is always shining. You just have to go up in during the day in a aeroplane, even though it's raining and cloudy and dark. If it's during the day, you go through the clouds and you'll find that the sun is shining. So God is good. And this goodness, God wants us to experience, wants us to experience. Do you remember the scripture? Taste and see the Lord is good. So you you can taste the goodness of the Lord. The the psalmist there is encouraging someone to go and experience, go and see, go go and meet God, go and get to know God, and you will taste, "Mm, mmm, yeah, that's good. Just like when someone makes you some nice food and says this is lovely try it try try what i ordered and you try it and you taste and you go "Mm, that is good that is good i wish i'd ordered that taste and see the lord is good goodness experiencing for three years as jesus ministered everybody experienced god's goodness firsthand by him and even today um the holy spirit is at work bringing God's goodness. So so this is really important. If if there's if there's anything that you that you should never forget, never forget no matter what, God is good. And one day his fullness of his goodness will be revealed uh when Jesus returns, okay? So God's glory comes firstly with his goodness. But th- then we also he says I'll make my goodness uh pass by you and i will proclaim i will speak out the name of yahweh before you now this is really important because i spoke about reputation as being part of of god's glory the glory of his reputation so when we speak about the name of the lord we're talking about his nature his character his person who he is what he's like how he can be trusted. Uh, We're speaking of of the way he does things, not just what he does. We know that um, uh, uh, um, that, that God was a friend to Moses and showed him his ways, showed him his ways. Um, So when we know God, we don't just know about him. We uh, we get to know him. And we're learning his character, his nature, his integrity, his trustworthiness and his ways. You know, when you begin your walk with the Lord, you you grow in knowledge. You should grow in knowledge. You're reading the Bible and you're learning about him. You're learning about him through reading the Bible. You are knowing what the Bible says. The Bible says God's like this. The Bible says God's like that. The Bible says this is how he feels about this. This is his opinion. So you're reading about someone. But as you walk with the Lord, um, what happens is knowledge becomes imparted experience. Knowledge can't become an imparted experience. So you can read in the Bible that God is faithful. But I bet a few of us could give a few testimonies of our experience of his faithfulness. We can read in the Bible that God is love. But I think all of us could talk about moments where we've experienced God's love. God is protector. Have you experienced his protection? We thank God for our sister this evening and her husband that were protected in that car car crash. So when you talk about the Lord being our shield, 
um, she would be able to say tonight, yes, I have actually experienced that aspect of his nature and character. It's not just the Lord is our shield and ever pre a present help in the Bible now, but um, but it's something that um, that she and her husband actually have experienced. Knowledge becomes experience, imparted experience. And our whole life is about experiencing God and turning what's in the Bible into an experience, uh, reading about it. And then as we walk with the Lord, experiencing truth, experiencing it in our lives. And so the name of the Lord is um, is very important because it's his character, his goodness, but also his name, his authority. Um, and then he says, I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious. So this is sovereign. He'll be gracious to whoever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. And no one can tell him who he should be gracious to and who he should judge um, because everybody deserves judgment and no one deserves grace. And uh, if God wasn't gracious, gracious, we would all be judged and we would all get what we deserve. So no one um, can um, can. Um, what's the word? No one can demand uh, from God graciousness, but we can appeal to his graciousness because he is so gracious we can appeal to his graciousness and th this word graciousness i'll be gracious to whom i i'll be gracious this this hebrew word is chanan chanan in english c-h-a-n-a-n -A -N. chanan chanan and it it literally means to bend or to stoop in kindness to a, an inferior to bend or to stoop down to an inferior to help them so in other words to be gracious to show favor um to pity uh to direct favor to or to have mercy mercy on and um a, a good picture of this graciousness that would that moses was about to uh, experience because it was one of the four parts of god's glory that he wanted to impart to him this graciousness he's going to experience this graciousness we we find this in a in a psalm which i'll share with you from psalm 113 uh share 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 okay um i'll start from verse four the lord is exalted over all the nations his glory above the heavens who is like the lord our god the one who sits enthroned on high who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth he raises the poor from the dust he lifts the needy from the ash heap he sits them with princes with princes of his people he settles the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of his children. So this speaks of, of God, 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 not he is lofty, he is high, he is God the most high. But this um this beautiful graciousness, I'll be gracious to whom I'm gracious, is God when he he sort of like bends down like a, a tall father to a small child and comes down to our level as he did ultimately with, with, with by sending his own son reaching out bending down and taking those that are cut down and lifting them up god is lifting pe people up when we humble ourselves god exalts us uh, but sometimes we don't need to humble ourselves sometimes our life or, or our circumstances that we find ourselves have humbled us. Uh, we, we're in a humble position uh, in society or life or some some circumstances humbled us. And here God raises the poor from the dust, the needy from the ash heap and sits them with princes. Those that are barren, the childless woman, God brings fruitfulness to those that, that are are. Or, or barren uh he, he can bend down to us where we're burned out even where there's destroyed lives you know the ashes someone could say my life is just burnt up in ashes it's just my life is just ashes well he'll lift 
the needy from the ashes and he can lift those that are in ashes he can lift them to great places of power influence and and blessing as he does here he can seat these ash heap people these dusty people he can seat them with princes and this is what our god is like and then finally his compassion he says i will uh i will have compassion on who i have compassion and the hebrew word for compassion is rakam rakam i might be saying that wrong but it's r a c h a m r a c h a m so this compassion and this compassion we've seen is graciousness and all these things are linked gracious is stooping down and lifting up well rakam compassion means to love and be compassionate it actually in the hebrew means to caress to caress so you know to caress uh somebody that you love to hug someone you know um and uh, this this is the idea of god's loving touch on our lives he he's so wonderful the lord isn't he 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 can do big things and he can do little things he can um he he's very thoughtful isn't he very thoughtful and sometimes god can can caress us with such loving loving ways and 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 the little things in our lives are as important to god as the big things and i always think it's wonderful when he does a little thing in our lives and you think why would you even do that nice thing for for me it's such a little thing such a little thing um well that's because of 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 his compassion you know uh, matthew 9 verse 36 when jesus saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd and the greek word for compassion really talks about the 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 inner part of our the bowels of our lives you know and uh, the emotional aspect of of this so here when we talk about god's glory and all of this um moses experienced not just heard about but experienced he experienced his goodness he experienced the power of his name and who he was he experienced his graciousness of the god who bows down and lifts up he experienced his compassion uh his uh his caress um his his compassion on people and i just think that's so wonderful that god is so many things and there's so many attributes of god so many aspects of god but when moses says show me your glory god says goodness my name graciousness and compassion and whatever else god is he at his core are these things we can trust in them we can call on them and when god shows up with his in his glory say if a revival came which is god showing up on earth with his glory if a revival came we would see his goodness we would see his his name and everything his name can do we would see grace to sinners and righteous alike and we would see great compassion through the the ministry of the holy spirit so i just wanted to share with you that night don't forget these four things call upon these on god god and when god's presence comes these four and other things will definitely be in evidence thank you mm-hmm.